TPO Rankings. Hello and welcome back to the TPO Rankings show, this time on video. Jake, how are you this evening? Um, good, Cody. I was, I'm used to the intro, the TPO Rankings podcast, which, uh, like you said, changing it up this week. Yeah, it'll still be a podcast though, Jake. So we're doing a two-for-one two deal. Brilliant. Uh, no football jerseys on tonight, Jake. Yet. Let's uh, let's leave that one because by the end of the episode, I, I hope to have a few wardrobe changes. And uh, on that, camera, that'll come. <laughs> I may we may have to edit that bit out, but we've got a few MPLs to talk about and different games, and we do, I've got Jake. a few jerseys ready to go. Well, thanks for asking, Jake. I am wearing Altona Magic tonight, and Very in good. honor of the the uh, Victorian MPLs kicking off this weekend and the New South Wales MPL. So. The two, arguably the two strongest leagues, well, not arguably, well, according to TPO rankings, the right, two strongest are, yeah. leagues in the country, MPL leagues in the country are kicking off this weekend. And I think Queensland to follow the following weekend. Jake, do you know? Uh, that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep, correct. Yeah, so we're going to be talking t- through uh, our picks or Jake's picks of the round for those two leagues. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a chat about FFA Cup because there's some more games around the country and there's more draws coming out, some more games this weekend as well. Um, we're not going to touch really on A-League this week, Jake. We sort of, we, we're putting that aside because the MPLs are all ramping back up and that's what we're here to talk about um, because everyone talks about the A-League. Not that many people talk that's about right. the MPL. Yeah, there's enough other people talking about that that uh, you can go and get it, your information elsewhere mm. and come here for the, uh, the the grassroots stuff. That's right. And the one thing we will talk about, uh, A-League re- related, was our under-23 draft pick and, and just a quick update on how that is going after the round just finished. Jake, the A-League um, victory just beat Phoenix 2-0 as we sit here recording. I think that finished pretty recently. So It did, yep. All done. Okay, Jake, let's kick things off here. And I'm going to throw this image up on the screen for those watching at home, for those uh, listening to the podcast. You can find the video on YouTube, Facebook, and that's probably all. Um, the top and we'll 25, talk it a little bit. Yeah, top 25 rankings as they currently stand, as you'd, as you'd imagine. Well, not always, but as you'd imagine, the 12 A-League clubs are the top 12. Um, Jake, I'm just, I might just quickly read off 13 to 25. So, so the top ranked... Um, a non A League team is Avondale FC in 13th from Victorian MPL Lions from Queensland. Jake surprisingly in 14th. I might let you jump in here and, and talk through the rest. Okay, um, and you say surprisingly, but Lions have had a few very good seasons, so they've kind of been up near the top for quite a while now. But following down the the rankings, there Heidelberg United, Campbelltown City from South Australia, Sydney United. Currently, the highest ranked New South hang, Wales. Hang on, so club. a Queensland and South Australian team are higher than a New South Wales team than the highest ranked. At the moment, New South yeah. Wales team. Look, oh. I, I'll get what I was going to say. I'll get actually. Let me um, read off the rest of these, and then I'll tell you why I think there's a couple of asterisks with this at the moment. Okay. Um, so running down the list after Sydney United is Oakley Cannons in 18th, Wollongong Wolves in 19th, Olympic FC from Queensland in 20th, Edgeworth Eagles, the highest ranked Northern New South Wales club, uh, Bentley Greens, Hume City, so two Victorian clubs, Adelaide Comets in 24th, and then Peninsula Power from Queensland rounding out the top 25. Um, the Probably the asterisk, Cody, is... Actually, there's probably a couple. So the first one is obviously coronavirus. So Victoria didn't play their season. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really looking at the rankings for those clubs from the end of 2019. Uh, so there's probably yeah. going to be quite a few changes, a lot of personnel changes, coaches, players. Uh, it's, a pretty big, this, it's a pretty big asterisk. It is, yeah. And and so that's the biggest one for Victoria. But then I will also say just for any of the clubs, like the, the best example I have is um, Apia, from New South Wales. They were the the highest ranked NPL club for quite a while. Last year they finished, I think they might've been bottom of the New South Wales NPL yeah, or, I think so. or you know, bottom couple. So they fell um, quite a way down. They're not even in the top 25 right now. Now I'm, I'm not even sure what the, uh, the reason for that. It was probably, you know, personnel reasons during a COVID year, uh, no relegation threat. Um, so I would expect that there'd be a number of clubs who kind of put 20, 20 uh, as a season to this, you know, put less importance and, and we're gearing up for a big 2021. So I'd expect there to be quite a few changes this year. Jake, question for you. Who will be the top five ranked non-A-League clubs at the end of this season? Okay. The the- um, 
I look, I'm going to reel off five, probably five that are already in the top 25, only because it is quite difficult to to jump up that high from sure. outside. It can happen, but you know, a team like Arpia, if they have a good season, could jump up. I can't see them getting all the way at the top. So I'm going to stick with, uh, I'm going to go Avondale. I'm actually going to stick with Lions as well. Uh, not necessarily in this order, but I think they'll both have strong seasons. Um, I'll say Wollongong Wolves will, will mm. move up into that top five. Uh, I might even stick with Heidelberg United as well because they're just one of those, again, not knowing too much about the the team changes, but they're just such a strong side and have been for a while. And as a number four, uh, I might actually go with, I'll throw one in there, Cody, that probably surprised people. Peninsula Power from Queensland mm. will go from 25th up uh, all that way. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say Peninsula. I just have a feeling they'll be very strong this year. Um, I agree with you on probably Avondale. I'm not sure on lines yet. I don't really know what they're looking like this year. They're always strong, but I just don't think they will be as dominant. Um, I'm not sure. South Australia is a tough one. Comets had such a good year. Uh, Campbelltown's already so high. Oh, so who's got, New South Wales is a tough one, Jake. Like you, I, I suppose Wollongong would be up there as favourites. Um, Arpia yeah, is yeah. probably said to have a good year, but we in full transparency to the to the watchers and to the listeners, I, I don't haven't been atop of any um, transfer news really. Um, I sort of see some come through on, on social media, but I don't really know who's looking good for the year. So that that, that we're basically just pulling the, these names out of our ass. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was cool. going to try and soften that, but no, I can't. It's cool. True. All right, let's move on to the MPLs kicking off this. Uh, weekend, so we'll start with Victoria, Jake. I might just rattle off the games, and then and then we'll go into your three games that you've picked out as a bit of a highlight. So Port Melbourne are hosting Melbourne Knights to kick things off on Friday night. Um, then we have a Dandenong Derby, the Thunder are hosting City. Do they play out of the same ground? Actually, I'm not sure if they do. Not a no. question. I know the answer to. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're I, I, will, I don't way. think so, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, East Ellis. Eastern Lions uh, host Bentley Greens. Avondale host Oakley in what will be a really good game. Hume hosts Altona Magic. St. Albans, Saint, St. Albans Saints host Green Gully. And what a game this is to find, to round out this round, Jake. Um, Heidelberg hosts South Melbourne on, on Sunday. What time is that one? That looks to be at about 5 p.m. Queensland time. So that look, probably 6 p.m. local time. So, Jake, go into the three games you've picked out for us. All right, so the first one, um, and I'm going to pull one of my jerseys here, Cody. I think I can see one in the the background there, at the Dandenong um, Derby. I think I can see a white Dandenong City jersey, maybe. Um, does that look like it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I got a thunder one here. I got both of them out actually. Ah, there you go. All right, let me grab mine. So for those watching the video, I do have this one now. I'm not going to put this one on. Um, sorry if the audio went quite there. Very good. I'm not going to put this one on because it's uh, quite a small shirt and I do not have the upper body to pull that one off. You, you've um, missed preseason this, this year, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I had the preseason, I was struggling with that one. Um, so, yeah, the Denver on Derby and a couple of reasons. Obviously, it's uh, a Derby game um, for those clubs. But also, I think this is the most closely matched in terms of the rankings out of all of these games. So they're actually ranked 54th um, for Dandenong City and 56th for Dandenong Thunder. So they, they really couldn't be any closer. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one is that I've pulled out is Avondale against Oakley Cannons. And um, again, these, you know, both ranked in the top 25 um, clubs in the country. The the main reason probably for this one though, uh, for me anyway, is I wanted to see, oh, I want to see how Avondale come out um, as the top ranked MPL club. Mm. Are they going to be as strong this year? Um, yeah. And I, I think it's a big test for them against Oakley Cannons. Um, and I do have an Avondale jersey, which I'll, I'll get up in a second as well. But the third one for me was that one you mentioned, Heidelberg against South Melbourne. Um, again, just a, a big matchup for the first round. Uh, and Heidelberg, you know, like I mentioned before, they've been one of the strongest NPL clubs for a number of seasons now. South Melbourne have slipped down a bit. They're currently ranked in 44th um, place in the country, but um, Heidelberg's still up in 15th, and I think this will be a, a, um, a good game to kick off the season. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the New South Wales NPL. While, while I talk through the pictures here, Jake, do you want to throw any shirts on or are you all good? Yeah, go on. I'll, I'll do a quick wardrobe change while you're talking through them. Cool. All right. So 
it looks to me like Manly uh, kick off the round with again hosting Mount Druitt Town Rangers. Which way am I reading here? Yeah, left to right. Marconi hosts Sydney FC, the youth team there. On Saturday, Northbridge Bulls uh, host Sutherland Sharks. Sydney Olympic hosts Sydney United, which will be uh, a massive game. Blacktown hosts Apia on also on Saturday. And on Sunday, it looks like the only Sunday game, Rockdale hosts Wollongong Wolves. So some really big clashes there. I've just alt-tabbed over and you've got your up your jersey on. Nice one, Jake. Jake, before I've we get got... into your three games, yep. Northbridge, they're the... Um, the North Shore seven, Mariners. North Shore Mariners. And yeah, I believe re- rebranding, uh, renaming. They're affiliated with MacArthur, I believe. They're like some sort of... Got some yeah, deal. Yeah, I think that sounds right. I think mm. it was one of those kind of weird ones that... Location-wise, didn't seem to make a lot of sense, but uh, I don't know a lot about it other than there's been a bit of a name change. Awesome. All right, talk us through your three games you picked out, Jake. All right, so the first one um, is Sydney Olympic against Sydney United. Um, I think this one makes sense to most people. I mean, it's a fairly closely ranked. Uh, Sydney United being, the, as we mentioned, the top ranked in New South Wales club at the moment. Um, MPL club and Sydney Olympic outside the 25, they're ranked 30th, but it'll, you know, in terms of rankings, they're still fairly close together. Um, so that one to kick us off on the Saturday. Uh, the next one is Blacktown City and Apia. Um, I've got my Apia jersey, as you mentioned, from um, a couple of seasons ago now. Um, Apia, they were, I'm pretty sure, Cody, you might remember better than me, but I think they finished the last couple of seasons before 2020. So probably 2018, 2019, they were the top ranked MPL side back mm. and forth, them and Heidelberg. So, Heidel, yeah, and um, even ben, I think Bentley jumped in there from time to time, but I think uh, up here in Heidelberg sort of fought it out mo- most of the time. Yep, that sounds right. And so I would expect them to have a better season, obviously, than they did in 2020. And I, d- I wouldn't be surprised if we see them in the top 25 very soon. Blacktown City just outside as well. They're actually ranked in 27th. So those two are, are very close as well. And then the last one is Rockdale City against Wollongong Wolves. And again, Wollongong Wolves, one of the strongest uh, New South Wales sides over the past couple of seasons, ranked 19th at the moment. Rockdale had a good year last year as well, and, and they're ranked 26th. So they're the three games that caught my eye. Um, and... We've moved on from Victoria, Cody, but I do have a couple of jerseys here, which I'm just going to kind of hold up as we move on to the next bit. But I've got my couple of seasons ago, Avondale jersey. Um, And then this is probably my favorite, one of my favorites in the collection, Cody. And this is the, Mm. it's kind of hard to see on the small screen, but this is the Heidelberg um, special edition jersey. I'm not, I can't remember what it was that they put it out for, but that was a one-off jersey that they only wore a couple of times and yeah, it's one of my, one of the nicer looking ones, I think. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I think Jake Rockdale, just going back to the, that last game there, I, I believe they finished on top or uh, I don't know if they, did they go through to a grand final last year? I, you tested my yeah. memory. I'm not sure. For folks listening slash watching at home, we did, we sort of tuned out last year with COVID. We sort of just um, focused on other things, um, getting our life in order, businesses and work and whatnot. So, including, including playing ourselves. Yeah, that's, that's right. So we ha- we didn't really follow along too closely, uh, but we're back this year for 2021. And this is sort of kicking things off. Okay, Jake, uh, just a couple more things to, to touch on. The, the next one is the FFA Cup. So we had some some games on the weekend, including my team, Jake Calander. We got up 2-1 against Rockville Rovers from Toowoomba. Uh, so that was a pretty – I mean, how often are we ever going to play Rockville Rovers? Um, I'll probably never play them again. Um, so that's good. We march on, and, and we're not sure when the next the draw for the next round is, but we could be facing basically any team left in the Cup now as the MPL teams, I believe, come in. Um, the ACT draw, Jake, I believe the Capital Football uh, FFA Cup that came out yesterday or today. And the only other thing I wanted to touch on before you sort of you, you go into some of your surprises or and then look t- towards um, the next f- round of fixtures is that Caboolture, Jake, they're out of the FFA Cup. They're this new team with lots of money uh, on the for those who aren't aware where Caboolture is about. Uh, 40 minutes maybe north of Brisbane. Used to be in the Sunny Coast League, but but moved to Brisbane. And they, they're now in the new third division, uh, I suppose you'd call it, within the state league setup. So Queensland it's kind, just... It's kind of, for those in other states, um, it's kind of like the MPL3, but yeah. it's not called that in Queensland. Yeah. Well, yeah, they've just announced this is a brand new league this year. Caboolture are in there. And by all accounts, they've got a great team. And, and um, But yeah, they went down to 
Who'd they lose to? I can't even remember now. Uh, well, that's one of my um, Mogul. upsets. Cody. They went down to Mogul, who yeah. are two divisions below them. Um, and mm. not that we'll get into it in any detail, Cody, but you and I and, and some others um, are in a bit of a face uh, FFA Cup tipping mm. competition and we're trying to predict which of the 21 non-A-League spots will be filled. And Kombucha was your dark horse and they're gone they already. They're gone already. That's very, very disappointing because you got um, and it, you got five points for picking a team outside of the top NPL who made the, the cut, who made the final 32. So they were, I think, I think I chose two teams, maybe three um, outside of the the top MPLs to make the final 32 um, as a bit of a, to get some bonus points when one's gone already. So that's the, that's the risk you run, I suppose. Jake, what games have you, what games have you got noted down? Um, before I dive into that, I did see that, I think it's the New South Wales um, draw for the first couple of rounds is going to okay. be um, taking place this Friday. So Friday the 26th, I think. So um, we'll be able to maybe next week or um, sooner on our socials, we'll probably talk about some of those games that get drawn. But um, there's a few kind of upsets or games worth or results worth mentioning um, from the weekend. So the one you just touched on, Kabulcha losing a mogul, a bit of an upset. Um, another one is, and, and for those not in Queensland, you might not recognize these names, but we're kind of hoping that by focusing on some of these, you know, cup sets, we, we might, you know, in some small way help to, you know, educate people from and, and ourselves on different states and some of these clubs that aren't in the top league. But um, some of these as well, I'm kind of hoping will progress to the later rounds of the qualification and, and maybe they'll be kind of getting a bit more attention. But this one is Ripley Valley and they're a new club in 2018, brand new. Uh, they've got promotion about three years running and they've just knocked off a team, Sanford Rangers, who are two divisions above them. So that one was a big upset. Um, another one here, Cody, Budrum. Uh, Budrum Wanderers up your way at the sunny coast. They were slight favourites over Ipswich City from Brisbane, but they ended up winning 12-1. So <laughs> that was just a big result. And I actually somehow missed that on the day until I, I noticed it today as I was putting some data in and um, yeah, a bit of a surprise there. Another one is, again, from the Sunny Coast League, Nambour Yandina United. They were probably... Uh, they played Brisbane Knights, um, obviously from Brisbane. Knights were probably slight favourites here, but Nambour Yandina ran out 4-0 winners. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, it was a big result there. The last one was one that was actually covered on Football Queensland live stream, and I've seen their FFA Cup pages uh, sharing the results and or some highlights. And this was a bit of a crazy one: the Lakes versus Burley Heads from Gold Coast to so the Lakes from Brisbane. Um, the Lakes were five-one up, some you know, probably midway through the second half, and Burley Heads brought it back to five-all. Mm. in about the 89th minute. The Lakes scored a, a very late winner in injury time and then Burley going for the equaliser hit the crossbar with the last touch of the game. So it was just a crazy end to a game um, and the Lakes ended up, as I say, winning that one, which was a bit of an upset as well. Yeah. So those are my those were the upsets, Cody, that I pulled out. I've got three games. As you mentioned, there's, there's some games of Victoria happening this weekend um, in their round one. So I've pulled out, as I said, three and these are kind of, based partly on you know the rankings and how close some of these games are but more than that it's it, for me anyway I've pulled out ones that include some clubs from regional premier leagues playing state league clubs so because that kind of interests me a bit so the first one is Deakin University playing Tatura um, soccer club from Bendigo uh, and Deakin from state league five uh, the next one is Moama Uchuka Border Rangers who we mentioned on the podcast last week Cody they mm. had had a win uh, from Bendigo as well, and they are now playing Barnstoneworth, if that's how you say it, United from State League 5. And then the last one, we mentioned Mildura City last week as well from Sunraysia because they were travelling to play a team from Shepparton. Um, they got that win, and now they're playing a State League 4 side in Chisholm United. So uh, they will, according to the rankings, Mildura City still be favourites there, so I'll be interested to, to see if they um, yeah, can get that win. Got to love the cup, Jake. Absolutely love it and, uh, yeah, look forward to following it, especially in the next few rounds as some of the bigger teams come in as well. We love we love the smaller teams, but, I mean, I, I don't really – you don't really know the names at all, so it's not too familiar. But when you start to see some of the bigger clubs come in, that's when – at least for me, that's when it starts to get really exciting and, um, yeah, really looking forward to see the FFA Cup 
progress and and who knows it might even have its own sort of i don't know if they've announced the final um locational date as yet but i know that that um festival of football was something they floated not so long ago uh, football australia so perhaps we'll see i don't know if, if they can move quick enough this year jake but maybe we'll see a neutral venue for the ffa cup final um and yep. i don't even, we, i don't think they've even announced a date yet for the final no not uh I'm not sure on the date thing, but definitely not yeah. the location. Um, but like you mentioned, yeah. they, they talk more just about a neutral venue and yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. All right, Jake, final segment of the show is our under 23 draft update. You absolutely smashed it this week for folks watching, listening at home. We basically chose uh, 10 players each who are under 23 years of age playing in the A-League as a draft. And, and each week, each round, they'll score points according to the Fantasy A-League site, Sports Deck. Uh, this week, Jake, you absolutely killed me. As I just said, you got 92 points all up from your 10 plays and I got 33. So the running total now, you're on 475 after this would be around nine. Yeah. Uh, nine, yep. And I am on 410. So you've taken that. That lead is quite healthy now. Um, who are you? some of your to, uh, top scorers this week? Uh, so I kind of had four players that got me most of those points. Uh, Jake Brimmer, and that was based on most, so victory had two games in this game round or game week. Um, tonight, the game that has finished half an hour ago, he got two assists. So he scored me 27 points. Um, I had Callum Neuenhoff who got me uh, 20. And then the other two who kind of came in with a lot of points were Kinu Backus from Western Sydney uh, and Joel King from Sydney. Uh, and then I got some points here and there with some others, but those were the biggest ones. Awesome. Anything else, uh, Jake, for the show before we sort of say goodbye? Uh, no, nothing other than to say, obviously, this is our, our first show um, video for a while and we're looking to do this you know, every week and we're going to be mostly focusing on MPL, FFA Cup sort of stuff uh, if there are any, and obviously the rankings uh, as part of that. So if there are any questions, suggestions, um, you know, things that people want to have covered or us talk about, then yeah, more than welcome to, to reach out on any of the social media or wherever Cody, you can tell them what the best way to do that is, but um, yeah, However they want. To have some yeah. input. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do our best to reply. Instagram is probably the best one. I, I seem to um, be able to check those messages and reply a little bit easier than Facebook. They go missing a little bit in the notifications. So as always, you can check the full rankings, TBR rankings at www.tbrankings.com and you'll find the full list of over 760 clubs, Jake? 763 at last count. Yeah. Although I did see a, a Twitter message or Twitter comment uh, yesterday or today saying some yeah, of the clubs are folded. So maybe down to 760. Yep. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you back here next week.